That was so awesome. Oh, awesome. Yes. Man, let's keep it going though. Such a great day. Everyone should do this. They should every day. Vibrations, railroad yeah. tracks. Oh, Wait, I I have a great idea, honey. What? Will you let me interview you for my greatest ascension blog? Yeah. And you can teach us all about how to stay healthy and things we can do to improve our health. Why not? Love it. And live more vibrantly. Let's learn how to bend railroad spikes too while we're at it. All right, why not? All let's right, go. let's go inside. <laughs> we'll see you inside. Hi everyone, I'm Kay Michelle Pizzini here today. This is the first installment for my Courageous Ascension blog. And I am super pumped to have my honey, Dr. John Manning Jr., also known as Dr. J here with us today. He has a full-time 30-year chiropractic practice with a specialty in applied kinesiology. And he is here today to give us some guidance on how to stay sane and healthy during a spiritual awakening. Thank you, babe. And let me, first of all, thank you so much for having me and for your first, your inaugural blog on your Ascension site. But um, yeah, uh, when we're thinking about achieving vibrant health, wow, what a topic, isn't it? Uh, we could spend an hour, a day, a lifetime, I think, trying to uh, achieve that goal. And we do. We spend a lot of time <laughs> and we on do. the subject. Yeah, and we do. You and I do, too. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I look at uh, my 33 years in practice um, as just the first step in the whole experience, isn't it? I think I've um, come across a few truisms and learned some things and probably learned some things the wrong way, the hard way, but, um, you know, I, I look at it as a, uh, a constant battle. I tell my patients from birth to death, um, our internal environments versus the external environment. You know, every moment of every day of our lives, we are fighting to keep some, uh, army of microbes from taking residence inside us. Um, we have billions of microbes helping us inside our guts and everything else. And um, our, I think our goal is to achieve um, a, a position where our immune systems are fighting adequately enough to keep the invaders at bay, you know? I think, I think I've learned that we need to um, be adherent to mother nature's big rules you know i think we can we can bend the rules but we can't break them without consequence now um i like to take a peek at it from a broad perspective and a, and a micro perspective mm -hmm. um i think your folks here will certainly know where i'm going when we talk about sort of the quantum energy level of health you know, when you get to a cellular level, everything's vibration, isn't it? Oh, Every, absolutely. Life is vibration. Uh, so I think you can look at the topic of health uh, like I look at everything, which is along a continuum. Um, a continuum, let's say, of vibrations, right? Let's start at zero vibration or death, really, along a continuum to 100% functional healthy vibration, which is the direction I guess we're all trying to head in. I don't think anybody's mm -hmm. there. And if we're watching this, no one's there. We're somewhere in between, aren't we? And I think um, everyone's trying to get to that level, aren't they? Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we realize then that life is energy and our vibrations are really our signatures, aren't they? They're like oh, our fingerprints. Absolutely. Right. And Western medicine knows this in its own way as well. I mean, um, MRIs, CT scans, mm -hmm. uh, electrocardiographs, electroencephalographs. These are all tapping in to the body's innate vibrational energies. Mm -hmm. All solid matter is made up of definite uh, particles arranged in some kind of crystalline structural organization called a lattice. And right. um, there's a crystallinity of all living organisms. Even the DNA molecule is arranged in a definite crystalline um, lattice kind of 
uh, organization. Every part of, of the organism is in communication with every other part of the organism through a, um, a, a sort of liquid, crystalline, lattice communication setup so that the entire body is, is one energetic communicating being. Right, right. right. So, so what so often happens when people have a spiritual awakening is that the energy of the soul, the spirit, the higher selves begins to come in and shift some of these functions in the body and we begin to feel not ourselves. We feel, some people feel crazy. Some people feel like they're hearing the voices and some people feel like they're losing their sanity. And so the, my feeling and my experience and with, with my honey's help, Dr. J here, we and I have been able to strengthen my physical body and strengthen my nervous system so that these shifts in energy and the information coming from my higher self does not feel so as disruptive. My nervous system can handle the this change and this shift as we increase our vibration, right? As we increase our vibration, some of the denser energies, molecules, uh, waste products in our body, literally, start to want to fall away, but they come up first to fall away. So that's, this is some of the experience that's happening and it can be confusing at best and disconcerting. So um, Dr. J is going to help us figure out how we can raise our vibration with physical, through the physical vehicle so that we can uh, stay on top of this and, and do this with a smile and optimism. You know, I'm just going to take off on that point a little bit, babe. Um, Please do. As you know, I've been in practice applied kinesiology a specialty in chiropractic for 33 years and um, I love Western medicine for certain things acute injury uh, life-saving surgeries life-saving drugs etc but uh, as far as wellness goes in my opinion you don't know you don't want to be there um, so people come in to me dr. J I've been everywhere I've tried everyone I've had every test I feel horrible, I've been hospitalized, I've been drugged, I've been probed, I've been this and that. Mm -hmm. Guess what? 95% mm -hmm. of the time, it comes down to diet and lifestyle choices. So in applied kinesiology, it's a method of diagnosis and treatment using manual muscle testing as a functional neurological tool. What do I mean by that? Well, muscles really are a window into the nervous system, aren't they? Um, with applied kinesiology, and that could be a whole other five-hour video, but we're able to gather information about not only the musculoskeletal system, but the endocrine system, digestive, immune, cellular detox pathways, and so forth. Um, you know, my practice began years ago as, as more of a musculoskeletal practice. Uh, a lot of athletes, uh, sports kinesiology was, was actually the name of my, my uh, practice. Uh, but the beauty of AK is that we can understand these underlying issues as well. And the practice has really evolved over the years into one that's at least 50-50 based around uh, folks needing nutritional um, and lifestyle choice changes uh, to get their mm -hmm. cells and bodies back on track. So, And so maybe we can step into the more day-to-day -day nuts and bolts uh, of healthy living here, if we could, you know, getting up every Please. day, <laughs> get, dragging yourself out of bed and getting yourself ready to get to work and all the little bumps in the road that we um, are, are used to having to avoid and dip through every day of our lives, I think, pretty much. But um, And just wondering what we can eat today that's healthy. <laughs> exactly. Um, as far as that goes, um, I probably will open a few eyes here and maybe have a couple people rushing to the log off button. I hope they don't. I hope they stay around. But, uh, you know, over the past 40 to 50 years, um, we've been inundated with information from the government and the doctor and the American Medical Association and the American Dietetic Association and the media. Um, 
And the point has been drilled home to us that we need to reduce our fats and reduce our cholesterol intake and, and live off carbohydrates and, and so forth. Uh, well, I'm here to tell you that that is all wrong. And we won't go into it deeply, but it's the, 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 that information has been uh, based on a lot of faulty data and to tell you the truth, a lot of lies. So with, a, with their genesis in corruption, power, and money. Big food, big pharma, big government, I'm gonna leave it at that. But here are the, here's the truth of the matter. Um, for most of us, what we need to do is drastically decrease our, our sugar and carbohydrate intake, um, drastically increase our healthy fats, and add, get this folks, uh, a good healthy dose of salt to our foods again. Now I know the doctor has told you, please avoid salt at all costs. I would say maybe five in a hundred people should do that who are sensitive to salt, 95 in a hundred who haven't been using salt will get far healthier when they mm -hmm. add it back in. And I'll, I find this a lot in my muscle testing practice. Uh, folks who come in with um, heart issues, congestive heart failure and this and that, high blood pressure and so forth, have all been told by the doctors Stay away from salt, it's going to raise your blood pressure. Most of these people, when I muscle test them with salt on their tongues, go stronger than a bull. And by the way, I don't just mean white table salt with sodium chloride in lieu of iodine. That's no good. I want broad spectrum 60 or 70 uh, trace minerals, and that comes from things like good sea salt, pink Himalayan salt, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to tell your folks exactly what I tell my patients. Um, I love, I read this quote a million years ago and I use it almost every week. Eat only foods that rot, spoil, or decay, but eat them before they do. That about sums <laughs> up what we ought to do in our diets, okay? Our diets in America are full of processed foods that last nine years on the shelf, mm -hmm. hydrogenated oils that are brutal killers because of inflammatory effects they cause on the diet, colorings, preservatives, etc. All things the body has not been designed to handle. You know, there's a very famous um, study called the Framingham Heart Study. was begun in 1948 in Framingham, Massachusetts. Ten years before I was born, it's still going. Uh, they're in the third generation of, uh, of a study um, of, uh, of health and heart uh, health in these folks. Uh, based around diet, lifestyle, and so forth. Now, there's been a lot um, of interesting data out of that study. A lot of it has been skewed and biased a little bit in the, in the um, recommendations that we've been getting out of the government for years. I want to read a quote. Out of this is a quote from Dr. George Mann, who was a major researcher in the Framingham start, uh, Heart Study. He went on record saying this, the diet-heart hypothesis that suggests that a high intake of fat or cholesterol causes heart disease has been repeatedly shown to be wrong. Yet, for complicated reasons of pride, profit, and prejudice, the hypothesis continues to be exploited by scientists, fundraising enterprise, food companies, and even governmental agencies. The public is being deceived by the greatest health scam of the century. This is from the great book by Dr. Uh, David Perlmutter called Grain Brain. Uh, I love that book. I sent, I sent copies to all my family. <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay, heart disease isn't caused by cholesterol, isn't heart caused by saturated fat. What's the problem? Well, inflammation, yep. okay? Um, what causes inflammation is what we need to get at. High cholesterol folks actually live the longest, and we can refer to studies on that too. But so what do we do in our daily lives to prevent this oxidizing and problem-causing um, inflammatory um, action in the body? I hate to say it, but it's we need to eliminate sugar, and we need to drastically reduce grains in our diet. These things are... Um, Pro-inflammatory, they're actually omega-6, but these omega-6 uh, oils are very pro-inflammatory in nature. In to take it a step farther, 
inflammation um, is at the root of all chronic disease, essentially. Alzheimer's disease in the brain, heart disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, these are all inflammatory processes, and we can get that back to too high carbohydrate and sugar and not enough, get this, saturated fat and omega-3 fatty acids, which are anti-inflammatory hormone producers. And that, folks, wraps it up. Wow, that makes so much sense. It's sad news for this Italian. Yeah, <laughs> it's sad news for me too. But, uh, uh, you know, in 1994, um, the American Diabetes Association went on record recommending 60 to 70% of our caloric intake should come from carbohydrates. Um, guess what happened? The diabetes rate doubled from uh, 1997 to 2007. Direct result of our increase in carbohydrate intake and decrease in, in good, solid, healthful fats. You know, humans have thrived on fat for over 2 million years. So why in the last 50 should we uh, go against that uh, yeah. DNA and genetic blueprint that has set us up to thrive for so long. Mm -hmm. So I guess um, if I were to, to wrap up just the food portion of this kind of uh, daily life, let's go for good, solid, healthful fats, which are basically omega-3 fats, and believe it or not, good saturated fats, avoiding processed fats and vegetable oils in that aisle in the, in the mm -hmm. supermarket with the corn oil, soybean oil, canola oil. These are terrible for the heart terrible for the brain, terrible for the blood vessels. I guess we want to make sure we're having enough good soluble fiber and vegetable source um, mm -hmm. nutrients in our diets every day, uh, nuts, seeds, etc. Um, as far as the rest of that goes, a good, a good water, I like to keep water with me all day if I can, uh, to flush cells and increases um, lymphatic drainage capacity and so forth. Obviously exercise is key. Aerobic exercises have been actually shown to increase um, factors in the brain that promote longevity. And, and I guess we mm -hmm. don't need to go into all yep. the other great reasons to exercise and so forth. But uh, we need to be out in the sun. We evolved under the sun. Vitamin D. Right, vitamin yeah. D. So um, remember, eat only food that rots, spoils, spoils or decays, but eat it before it does. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good idea. And you know, it just makes so much sense when you think about it. You know, we love our pasta, we love our cookies, we love the greens, but, you know, when I eliminate those things, I think better, I feel better, I feel happier. Um, well, you know, increased blood sugar is a great risk factor for early Alzheimer's um, and degenerative and dementia mm -hmm. um, kinds of results. Um in general so you know the seeds of our later degenerative processes especially in the brain my dad passed of Alzheimer's as you know um, are sown 10 20 30 50 years before symptoms arise so um, I think if you make a, a conscious effort every day to try to steer away from that that slice of bread and that that last cookie on the Mm -hmm. um, the, the takeout line at work or, or whatever it is, um, all of these things add up to great building blocks to, to strengthen our immune systems, to strengthen our cellular pathways, and hopefully ward off the, the terrible degenerative um, processes that we see so many of folks in the seventh and eighth decades mm -hmm. um, going through. You know, there is no repeat, is no treatment for Alzheimer's disease. Journal of American Medical Association um, has recently shown that as well. There's treatment. I shouldn't say there's no treatment, but there's no help for it. No reversal? No reversal. We The reversal and starts really with preventing. Once you get there and that plaque forming in the brain and inflammation throughout the, uh, the system, um, unfortunately, in a really deep downward spiral at that point. Absolutely okay. can reduce uh, systemic inflammation. Once you get degenerative breakdown in the cells in the brain, though, 
I think it's a tough thing to to hope that we can reverse. Wow. That's the seeds have been sown 30 years before that. So, you know, good fats reduce inflammation, hydrogenated oils increase inflammation, sugar increases inflammation, grains in general in increase inflammation. Saturated fats are absolutely pivotal for vibrant health. Mother's milk is over 50% saturated fat. Cell membranes are nearly 100% um, composed right. of Our saturated fat. Our brain is 66% fat. That's right. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll add one more piece to this puzzle. Um, everyone in America has some degree of leaky gut. And the cell connections um, in the lining of our gut um, are under assault um, almost every day from the things we eat, from the environmental toxins we take in, etc. Mm -hmm. When there is some disruption in that cellular uh, wall connection and molecules that should be passing through our intestinal tract um, and being absorbed in proper ways become improperly passing through the wall of the gut into areas outside the gut, it triggers inflammation, it triggers antibody formation, mm -hmm. and so forth. And in every single person, there's some degree of leakiness um, caused by gluten, wheat gluten. Mm -hmm. Now, we may not experience specific um, gluten-related problems with intestines that we realize, you know, only a very small percentage of folks are diagnosed with celiac disease. But in a 2015 study conducted um, by the, a Navy research team, uh, it was found that all persons have some degree of leakiness of the gut caused by gluten. Whether we have specific digestive complaints or not, um, that's a fact. That then translates into increased inflammation, which increases uh, risk to um, all manner of degenerative diseases that we've talked about. So um, gluten's so, a no-no. Right, and you said, um, you had mentioned the patients that come to you saying, Dr. J, I've been to doctors and nobody's helping and I feel awful, I feel like I'm dying. And you told me in the past that the reason why they feel that way is very often they have a gluten sensitivity and they have widespread systemic inflammation. It's, is it true that the gluten, do you feel that that's the case? I feel that gluten and sugar are the two major um, causes of inflammation in our diets and the consequences of that are, are literally um, devastating um, as we pass through our years. And so if you're experiencing spiritual awakening and you're feeling depression, anxiety, any negative emotional feelings, then look to your diet and see if that's the culprit, that that's part of the experience. Um, so, and part of spiritual awakening is tuning in. It's being more tuned into your physical body. It's the vehicle through which you are ascending. You are going through that journey. So taking care of your body, that means taking care of your nervous system. And like Dr. J had said, make sure you're breathing, you're exercising, you're sleeping well and thinking well. Try to watch those thoughts, uh, stay away from negativity. And it's just about really being good to yourself. And if you take care of yourself and you watch your diet and you do all these things, you will feel better and your spiritual awakening will be much more joyful. And you will expand into that nice place of bliss. Bliss. Hey, can I add one more thing yes, before we leave? Yes, please, please do, please do. Um, you know, um, in my practice, I have uh, available to me in the office about 500 different supplements. Why? Because a specific supplement for you will probably not be as uh, appropriate for me. You're biochemically unique. I'm biochemically unique. So is everyone else on the planet. So someone with symptom A may have a need to fill a particular hole. Someone with symptom A over here will fill a different hole mm -hmm. to, to create the, the, uh, the, 
adequate physiological response to get the body working in order. But I want to, I, I have to mention one thing. I'm guessing there are a ton of coffee drinkers. I'm a coffee drinker and I know you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in 33 years of muscle testing um, every day, um, I have come across a couple things um, out of literally thousands of nutrients and foods and drugs that I've tested. The, the thing I'm most excited about right now is um, a particular coffee that, full disclosure, you and I both drink. Um, it's made from a company called Organo Gold out of British Columbia. Um, long story short, it's infused with an amazing uh, mushroom, organic Ganoderma lucidum, which is otherwise known as reishi mushroom. I won't go too far into it, but my muscle testing over the past 12 months, I started about a year ago this month, January, um, has, has shown me it's been the most remarkable um, addition to my diet and, and to, the, to the diet of my patients that I've seen in three decades. So um, its nutritional profile is second to none. And there are 1,600 studies in the National Library of Medicine that I know of right now that um, extol the health benefits of Ganoderma lucidum, everything from cancer to stroke to diabetes, mm -hmm. Alzheimer's. So um, I'm going to just say, if your, folks, if your folks drink coffee or tea, I would recommend that they look into Organo coffees and teas because I stake my reputation on it. It's the most healthful stuff that I put in my diet every day, day after day. And who doesn't drink coffee? Well, I sure love it. Uh, oh, and another we do love the Organo. And on top of that, we add, we use it as an opportunity to add fats to our diet. And we put um, butter in our coffee as well as MCT oil. And there's a term out there called Bulletproof Your Coffee. And it comes from Dave Asprey. And he's on bulletproof.com. And you can look him up. But uh, so we totally geek out on the coffee thing. And... It's our guilty pleasure, right? We can't have any cookies or anything else. So it's the no coffee. No cookies. Load me more coffee so it's, with yeah. Organo. Yeah, so it's the coffee. <laughs> it's a coffee. And then, we, you know, the coffee now that has reishi mushroom in it has has fats. It has MC2 oil. And anyway, so anyway, we're just doing our best to stay healthy. And um, anything else, Dr. J, that you might want to say to our people, help, help people go through just life in general and spiritual awakening with with greater vibrancy you have those um chocolate chip cookies being made right <laughs> He's um, such a joker no um you know i just try to live day to day doing as little harm to my body as i can mm -hmm. and supporting it if i can days go by where i don't do such a great job and others days mm -hmm. other days i do better but um i think the big picture for me is you know, I want to try to do as little damage to my cells as I can every day, if I can possibly. And I want to try to support my cells with as many building blocks as possible, which means to me, pretty simple. We can read a million diet books, but it all comes down to feeding the cells the right stuff, doesn't it? I want to feed adequate fats in the form of avocado, olive oil, coconut oil, MCT oil, which is medium chain triglycerides, usually from uh, coconut um uh fish oil nuts seeds those kinds of things and will avoid trans fats hydrogenated oils like hydrogenated vegetable oil corn oil soybean canola all this stuff out safflower out um, those are pro-inflammatory want to get them out of the diets we want to put in vegetables with good fiber um dandelion greens broccoli those kinds of things um, all support the microbiome, which we didn't even get to talk about today, but mm -hmm. half of our immune system it resides in the gut, or more, 75% probably in the gut, and the microbiome is, is key for that. That's mm -hmm. uh, acidophilus, bifidus, probiotics in general. I want to try to get some exercise every day. I want to do some breathing exercises that mm -hmm. many of exercises you've taught me in the breathing mm -hmm. uh, world. So, um, right. activate the parasympathetic nervous system or your relaxation response. That's right. Right. Helps keep the body healthy and, and promote healing and well being. Right. 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 So, doing what I can every day. I don't know. Mm -hmm. but Me it, too. Maybe Me we too. can back again and talk about some Me more too. stuff. Oh, absolutely. We will. We will. 
Thank you so much for being with us today, Dr. J, honey. Thank you. We wish you all vibrant health and a blissful awakening. Yours in vibrant health. Okay. <laughs>